Oxidation and reduction are extremely common in biochemical systems, and it's not difficult to think of examples of this. For example, glycolysis, the breakdown of glucose, is a process that involves the oxidation of glucose. The electron transport chain, which is also called oxidative phosphorylation, clearly involves an oxidation process. And there are many, many others, many other examples of oxidation and reduction processes in metabolic systems. One of the interesting things about oxidation and reduction in biochemical systems is that it's often very straightforward from a mechanistic perspective. We're very familiar by now with the idea that reduction in an organic context often corresponds to addition, nucleophilic addition, of hydride. And this same idea holds in biochemical reduction reactions. Oxidation reactions, on the other hand, are eliminations eliminations of hydride. And so many biochemical oxidations are facilitated by molecules that we might denote as E plus that simply act as hydride acceptors. Upon accepting H minus, they form EH, neutral EH. On the other hand, reductants end up being hydride donors. Those molecules EH with an abundance of relatively nucleophilic hydride can donate the, that hydride to be oxidized back to E+. And these simple hydride transfers that look almost fantastically simple when we draw out, for example, curved arrows, can happen inside enzymes active sites where things are very carefully choreographed. Additionally, nature makes use of a fairly small number of molecules that fit into these categories E+, and EH as oxidizing and reducing agents respectively. And we're gonna look at a few of these here. The first and probably the most important biochemical reducing agent is nicotinamid adenine dinucleotide, or NADH. The redox active portion of NADH is this six-membered ring you see here, and in particular, the nucleophilic hydride is found at this position here that I've highlighted in red opposite the nitrogen atom. The loss of both electrons in the CH bond and the hydrogen itself generates the oxidized form of NADH. NAD+. So what we've lost here in essence is H-, and I'll kind of put that in quotes because that's not always exactly what happens. We could also think of this as, for example, H+, and two electrons, depending on the exact reduction process that's occurring. In this forward direction, then, we see that NADH has been oxidized since it's lost electrons, specifically two electrons, and a CH bond has been replaced with a CC pi bond. And notice that we've got an additional CN pi bond within the ring now as well. So if we draw curved arrows out for this, we actually see the important role that the nitrogen is playing in this oxidation process. Part of the reason NADH is a good reducing agent is that this nitrogen bears a pair of electrons that are relatively nucleophilic, relatively easily donated. And so this CH bond, for example, might be donated to some oxidizing agent, and on the product side, that would form something along the lines of O, H, minus. So mechanistically, again, this is pretty straightforward. This is just the cleavage of a CH bond with both electrons in the CH bond headed to the oxidizing agent. Often a proton is involved over here on the reactant side as well, and this keeps things neutral. So say the oxidized substrate picks up a proton either in the same elementary step or in a different elementary step, rather than ending up with an anionic product, we end up with something that now has two hydrogens. And this still corresponds to an oxidation of the NADH to NAD+, but now the reduced version of the substrate, OH2, is neutral instead of negatively charged. One thing we'll be interested in when we get to deeper discussions of metabolism is, what are the energetics of this process? How favorable or disfavorable is it? That, of course, depends on the oxidizing agent, but say we're interested in the relative, let's say, oxidizing ability of something like NAD+. The way we can get a handle on that and understand the energetics is to look at the standard reduction potential of NAD+. For NAD+, this is about negative 332 millivolts against the standard hydrogen electrode. This means that NADH is a relatively good reducing agent relative to reducing protons, for example, to H2, NADH has the ability to do that spontaneously. That's what this negative sign in the standard reduction potential is telling us. And this will become more clear as we look at the remaining reducing agents, which are 
certainly not as strong as NADH. NADH and its cousin, NADPH, which is structurally extremely similar, it just includes a phosphate group, that's what the P in NADPH stands for, are some of nature's best and most important reducing agents. It's worth noticing that going back in the opposite direction is reduction, and this corresponds to the addition of H- to NAD+. So let's take our hypothetical reduced form of the oxidized substrate, say now it has two hydrogens, we can get back the proton by cleaving one of the O quote unquote H bonds toward the substrate, and we can get hydride back onto NAD plus by breaking the other O quote unquote H bond and landing the pair of electrons with the hydrogen at this carbon opposite the nitrogen. And now electron flow heads over like this to make the nitrogen neutral again. The last thing I want to mention is a little bit about the organic chemical explanation for why NADH is such a good reducing agent. What makes it so awesome as a reducing agent? If you've seen a lot of organic chemistry, this is actually a good point to pause the video and meditate on this because it has to do with the relative stabilities of this redox active portion, particularly the ring on the product side versus the reactant side. If we look at the six member ring in the product, we see that it consists of a fully conjugated system, six membered ring, alternating double bonds, positively charged nitrogen, but this is a fully conjugated cyclic system with six pi electrons. That means it's aromatic. And as an aromatic ring, it possesses special stability. Nature senses this, quote unquote. And this is the reason why NADH, which of course lacks that aromaticity because of the sp3 hybridized carbon right here, now we don't have a fully conjugated ring system. Because we go from non-aromatic to aromatic, this is a relatively favorable reduction. We're going from a system that's not quite as stable, doesn't benefit from aromatic stabilization, to one that does. And this is a theme we'll see in the remaining reducing and oxidizing agents as well. Nature's reducing and oxidizing agents often take advantage of aromaticity to drive the oxidation and reduction processes. A second important cofactor that we find as a reducing agent in biochemical systems is FAD. Specifically, the reduced form is called FADH2. And FADH2 is a molecule that tends to give up two hydrogens at once to form neutral FAD as the oxidized form, which we'll see in a second. But I wanted to start by drawing out these hydrogens that are lost from FADH2 explicitly. In the oxidized form, we see those hydrogens are missing and we've established a couple of new pi bonds between carbon and nitrogen. The way this works mechanistically is analogous to the situation with NADH plus a proton, except now both hydrogens are built into. So the oxidized substrate will deprotonate FADH2. This leads to the formation of one of the carbon nitrogen pi bonds. And then hydride is also donated likely to a different position within the substrate, right? So O here in brackets indicates some very large organic molecule that can be reduced, for example. The product then is FAD, as you see right here, and the reduced form of the substrate. Both of those hydrogens that we drew in red in FADH2 have now been transferred to the substrate. From the FADH2's perspective, this is an oxidation process. Of course, the reverse direction, the addition of two protons and two electrons to FAD to form FADH2 is going to amount to a reduction process. And here again, we can ask about the thermodynamics here, the energetics here. What is the standard reduction potential of FAD? And here the reduction potential is negative 244 millivolts. And so the oxidation of FADH2 tends to be favorable, at least relative to the reduction of two protons to H2. And this isn't quite as negative as NADH to NAD+, because we're not exactly establishing aromaticity. We already have a fully conjugated pi system in the starting material because these nitrogens bear lone pairs. Finally, I wanted to cover an example of an oxidizing agent. And for that, I wanted to look at coenzyme Q. And coenzyme Q is very important as an oxidizing agent within the electron transport chain. It's an electron acceptor, the oxidized form, which we'll look at in a second. Just like FADH2, the reduced form of coenzyme Q, which you'll sometimes see written as QH2, contains both hydrogens that are donated to the oxidized substrate within its structure. 
one of those hydrogens is removed via deprotonation, and the other is donated to the substrate as hydride. The product of this is the oxidized form of coenzyme Q, which is often just denoted Q, where we see we've lost those two hydrogens connected to the hydroxyl groups in the reduced form. And from the substrate's perspective, we've formed the reduced form of the substrate, which includes two additional hydrogen atoms. So reduction of the substrate in the forward direction, but oxidation of QH2 is occurring in the forward direction. The reverse process is reduction, and what happens there is the addition of hydride and a proton to these two now carbonyl oxygens in coenzyme Q. And this pair differs from the previous two in that the reduction potential of the oxidized form, the reduction potential of Q, is now positive. In fact, it's positive 107 millivolts. And so relative to the 2H plus and H2 redox pair, the reduction of Q to QH2 is favorable. This makes this molecule a very important hydride acceptor and a key oxidizing agent within oxidative phosphorylation, which you may know better as the electron transport chain. 